Hey guys, welcome back to Gardening with Gabriel. Okay, so I received this plant a good while ago, or at least I received these seeds from Peru, a friend of mine, Naya, who's, who brought these seeds for me, of uh, maiz morada is, uh, I believe, how it's pronounced. Um, my Spanish friends would be able to confirm that pronunciation. Uh, and usually a drink, a very popular drink, fr is made from this uh, type of maize. It is a type of maize uh, called chicha morada. So now, I received five seeds, okay, last year. I started filming this episode last year. And the main intention of this episode, since it's the first time I'm actually sowing or have sowed and grown this plant to maturity, to harvest, um, the thing is, I wasn't sure of how to grow it, I wasn't sure of what to do, I know that it's maize, it's not like I haven't grown maize before that you do like in grade school, um, and so I just thought, hey, it's going to be pretty easy and pretty simple, but turns out it wasn't. This was a, it was a bit of a mammoth task to actually get this plant to flower successfully and to produce fruit, uh, which now I have plenty of seed and I'll show you what the seed looks like. And the reason why it was so complicated and why this episode may come across as being very fragmented is because I had to learn so much about it. What I thought I knew was wrong and then I had to relearn and relearn and relearn so that I could bring this episode to you. And so this is a very rare, unusual uh, type of maze. It is, and I tried looking, you know, researching, and there's very little information that I could find on the particular subject in the way that I want to show, sort of bring it to you, the, the, the manner that I want to bring it to you in. Um, and so I took these five seeds, I germinated them, two of which were duds, three of which did germinate, but because I got them in midsummer already, it, I already knew, like, I have one of two options. Either I try and save the seed for the next spring, which is coming after this winter. We're now in June, which is the start, first month of winter for us in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, and I thought to myself, it's either that, or I take the chance and germinate it now and try to bring try to bring it to fruit. And in light of the fact that it's come all the way from Peru and there are only five seeds, I thought, well, naturally, I'm going to try and do it. Now, maybe a little bit of impatience too. So, this is how I grew it. And this type of maize actually prefers a little bit of shade compared to regular maize. It is also commonly known as black Aztec maize or purple maize um, and it is exquisite it is so beautiful and I basically the male parts of the plant flowered prior to the female ears actually revealing themselves so I needed to cut off some of the male parts store the pollen and wait for the females to actually show themselves and then I could pollinate in hopes of just getting some seeds so that this cycle I'll be able to actually do a crop and then I will show you again how to do a full-on crop but for now this is a first timer um, but I have completed you know growing everything I have done I have done it all already so what I'm showing you is is a completed episode from start to finish and I am a proud parent of one cob out of five seeds because I was hasty and I broke off the younger cob too early. Um, but now I read the plant correctly. So for the next time, I will definitely have read it 100%. But this episode is about maize morada. Um, I have also called it indurata. Apparently indurata is not really 100% accurate. So I will try and black it out in the video, in the audio. But hey, if I don't manage to do that, can you forgive me? Can you? Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay, so let's get straight into it, shall we? Right. Follow. Hi.
Buenos dias, everybody, and welcome back to yet another episode. And today I am going to show you something uh, really interesting. Corn. Okay, a type of corn. So this corn is maize morado, is what it's called. So that's what it looks like. It literally is corn that is so dark burgundy uh, or super dark red that it actually appears black. Yes, I am wearing no t-shirt today because it is super stifling. Um, as soon as someone comes, I'll put my t-shirt back on. Um, and it's nothing below the nipples, so yeah. Um, okay, so these seeds, this is what they look like. Uh, I will take them out and show you what they look like. Uh, close up, so there are five of them. I'm going to germinate all five and Hopefully get a really good harvest. Might be a bit late in the season, but it's okay. I'll use the hothouse to actually speed up their growth. Um, this, I will tell you all about the uses of this wonderful type of maize. It's actually seriously fantastic. So, let's get growing. Okay, so this is what the uh, Zia maize indurata looks like, the black maize. Um, you can see it's actually a very deep, beautiful red. It's got many different uses, which I'll tell you about in a second. But first, we're going to sow these five seeds. And how we're going to do that is like this. So in these pots, I've already labeled them. And I've given them a largely sandy mix yes there's peat in it yes there's vermiculite in it uh, and yes there is also uh, compost in that so literally all i'm going to do is i'm literally just going to stick it in there nice uh, about an, less than an inch okay that's one uh, and then in there i'll just and how i'm pu putting it in is i'm putting it with a sharp point down you can see that because that's where the roots the plants going to emerge the roots going to go down first and then the plant will come up so i'm going to stick it in there and put this one we should add three hands three arms uh, in there and the fourth one and the fifth one so this maze, I believe, is actually quite tall. So uh, I will take you to to flowering uh, with this process, and uh, and that's it. So now all we do once again is water the gift of life. So again, I'm just going to wet them all and, uh, and wait for them to germinate. And that's all the water left in that bottle. But don't, don't dismay, I've got another one. So I'll just do that and that and that. And it's a nice deep pot again because this plant grows very quickly, the root system at least. So I really just want to develop a really good root system. Um, and yeah, and then we'll wait for the water to actually come out the bottom. So let's just give it some more. And I will see that it is dripping. Yep. Is it dripping? That uh, not quite yet. Is it dripping? Not quite yet. Definitely that one. It's not just water coming from uh, the other parts. That's definitely coming out. So we'll just 
for safety's sake, we'll just do these again. And for good measure, the back too. Okay, so, yep, that's dripping. This one's quite, uh, quite resistant. It's taking quite a while there. Okay, so we'll give it some more. And wait for it to sink in. And there we go. So, that, my friends, is sewing the Amaze Indurata, Amaze indigenous to Peru, Bolivia, and Colombia, with fantastic uses. So remember I sewed these on the 5th of December, it is now uh, the 28th of April 2020, that was last year I sewed them, 5th of December, and because it was already, I assume, midsummer, um, and I'm planting it in dune sand, uh, I decided to keep them at home because we've got wild animals at the nursery and they'd obviously just chow the crap out of these guys. So I kept them under my watchful eye so I could uh, watch them develop. I only got one cob and what actually happened here was the reason why is the male part, which is this part here, actually flowered way ahead of the arrival of the actual female bits. So the female bit is this part here those little furry furry bits over there like uh, like this this one is still um is only just arriving and it's still fresh there's no more pollen for this which kind of really sucks so uh I'm really glad that I'm at least I'm getting one cob so I managed to save some of the pollen and how I did that was I actually cut some of these off as they were opening and I put them into a plastic bag and I just uh, kept them in a cool dark space to allow them to dry and then once they were dry and the pollen was out I waited for the cobs to arrive and then I took the pollen and I actually just rubbed it on these on these bits here and that has actually caused the fat cob, which you see on the taller plant at the back here, um, to mature, or at least uh, give me some seed, so I can redo this, and I haven't actually lost, because look, uh, the person who gave this to me um, went to Peru, and with the whole lockdown thing, I doubt that's going to happen anytime soon, and we don't know how long those seeds were in the packet for, um, sitting at that Peruvian market, so I decided to sow them, um, and it was a bit of an emergency sowing, so I'm glad that I actually managed to get one cob. So let's, let's uh, wait for it to ripen and check what the uh, actual cob looks like on the inside. Okay, today it's really windy. Uh, we're basically at the end of May now. Uh, I'm hitting the first month of winter. And uh, this is the the way it looks now, and I see that this the corner the cob has actually dyed and browned completely on the outside. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it off now. Um, the second one has gone this really dark colour, it's very beautiful. I suppose that's uh, part of um, what this particular variety does and it's also got this beautiful dark leaf uh, vein in the leaf the mid vein and then where the leaf meets the actual stem it's also whoops let me just try and clear that up it's also quite uh, dark can't seem to do that now anyways um so yeah let's go ahead and take them off hey Seema so I'm not making a mistake, guys. You'll know. You'll know. I've done this with normal corn, but I hope that it's ready. Okay, let 
that's one and I think this one here I'm going to leave a little while longer since it was younger it came out much later uh, it does feel like there are a couple of seeds in there but we'll see okay but let's go check out this baby <laughs> yes let's go to the kitchen Okay, so this is it. So let's uh, let's check if we can open this up. I have to do this with one hand. So let's get that out of the way. There you go. Let's have a look and see, my friends, what is in here. Is it missile, hand grenade, or is it something to eat? Feels good. Beautiful color. Okay, I think we're getting to the to the good stuff. What are you doing, Senya? Oh, look at this beautiful color. How black it is, like purple. It's very nice. And oh, how beautiful is that? That's so stunning. Oh, wow. I was not expecting this. This is so gorgeous. And then these, these black. The leftovers of the uh, pistols. It's really beautiful. Um, let's just get this. It's like paper, this stuff. I'd actually probably write on it. Do some arts and craft or something with it. There we go. Guys, all I can say is already i'm so glad that i grew this when i did because now i've got tons of seed to do an entire like actually get a harvest so yeah it's like we live in a forested area so i was very concerned that i was not going to be able to keep the seeds safe and but what i mean by that is like with so many beetles and you know seed eating bugs and things I didn't want to take the risk. So, there we go. That is absolutely stunning. Yeah, it's, I'm having trouble focusing today, but yeah. So there you go. Well, guys, uh, that's the end of the episode. I hope you enjoyed this uh, and learned as much as I did. Catch me again in the next, well not the next one, but when I do uh, a full crop off of all of these guys here. Other than that, have a good one, stay safe, uh, and uh, keep your fingers green and all of that good stuff. Okay, bye for now.